Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about sodium lauryl sulfate and the effect it has on hair. Does it cause hair thinning? Does it cause hair shedding? Does it contribute to hair loss in any way, shape or form? Or is this just a myth that's spread by various online forums and blogs that aim to fearmonger their audience into buying all natural products? Let's talk about sodium lauryl sulfate, abbreviated as SLS. This is not to be confused with sodium lauryl sulfate, S-L-E-S. -S. SLS has various synonyms, just to make things more complicated and so that shampoo brands can pick and choose what name they want to use in the ingredients label should any one of these names garner a bad reputation. So here we have some SLS synonyms, sodium dodecosulfate, sodium monolaurol sulfate, sodium dodecane sulfate, and so on. The reason I'm making this video is because there seems to be a big divide on Reddit and various other online forums. Some people are saying things like, SLS will damage your skin and scalp. And I switched over to a natural shampoo and not only are my flakes gone, but my hair is stronger and thicker. And then we have Sarah who's saying that sulfates in shampoos cause thinning. But on the other hand, we have some people saying that they hate sulfate free shampoos. And when they switch over to SLS shampoos, boom, my hair goes back to normal and stops falling out so much. So what's going on? Why are some people hating on SLS while others are claiming that it's helping their hair? Let's try to demystify what's actually going on. So first of all, what is SLS? Here we have an SLS chemical compound. As you can see, it has a long carbon hydrogen tail attached to the SO4 sulfate group. And we also have a sodium ion, which is a salt balancing the charge. SLS is a surfactant, and you might be wondering, you know, what does this mean? What is a surfactant and why does it matter? So we all know that oil and water don't like each other. They don't mix well with each other. They are said to be immiscible. This is because water is a polar molecule. In other words, water has a positive charge on one end and a negative charge on the other end. On the other hand, oil is nonpolar. This means that its charge is evenly balanced rather than having a positive and a negative end. Surfactants help oils and water mix together. In other words, it allows oils to become miscible with water. So how does SLS work in a shampoo? Consider the scalp for a moment. On the scalp, we have sebum, an oily substance secreted by our sebaceous glands. If you're having a shower and you try to wash off excess sebum from your scalp without a surfactant like SLS, What's going to happen is that the water will glide over the sebum and will have a hard time washing off the oil because as we mentioned, oil and water are immiscible. SLS has a polar head and a non-polar tail. So what happens when you add SLS into the mix is that the tail, which is hydrophobic, i.e. hating water, will adjust itself into the oil, whereas the head, which is hydrophilic, in other words, loving water, will remain on the outside of the oil surface. So basically, the SLS compounds adjust themselves non-polarly into the oil. This then forms spherical structures called micelles, like we see here in step three. The micelles then easily disperse in water and are easily rinsed off in a shower. So without SLS, the sebum will be much harder to wash off because the surface tension between the water and oil will remain high. And this is how shampoos work. This is how they clean your scalp. And SLS is a pretty powerful surfactant, which is why it's used in a variety of applications, such as hand soaps, toothpaste, shaving creams, laundry detergents, shampoos, and even industrial engine degreasers. So let's look at the side effects of SLS. So, you know, what are the side effects of SLS and can it contribute to hair loss? So first of all, it's pretty well established that SLS can cause irritation in a dose dependent manner. And I'll come back to concentration in a little bit because concentration and duration of application really do make a big difference. But here we have another study claiming that SLS can cause irritation. So let's look at why some people might be complaining about hair loss due to SLS. Let's look at the scalp microbiome. Our scalp is home to a wide variety of microorganisms like bacteria and yeast. Uh, notably, we have QT bacteria, magnes, staphylococcus, and yeast like malassezia. When these various strains of bacteria and yeasts are in balanced quantities, they live in harmony on our scalp. You know, we feed them sebum and dead skin cells. And in return, these microorganisms produce enzymes that help regulate pathways involving the metabolism of certain proteins related to the hair growth cycle. So in other words, these microorganisms are good for us. They're happy eating our cellular debris and we're happy that they help us regulate various biological pathways. 
But when there's a disruption in the balance of microorganisms on our scalp, in other words, when we have too many bacteria or yeast, or when we have the wrong strains of bacteria, this can lead to inflammation. QT bacterium acnes, for instance, when we have too much of this, they digest our sebum and produce porphyrins as a byproduct. And when porphyrins interfere with UV radiation from the sun, they elicit an inflammatory response. Similarly, an excess of malassezia can result in inflammatory byproducts, which can harm the scalp and interfere with normal antigen to telogen ratios. And this study investigated the amount of sebum, triglycerides, and free fatty acids on the scalp at various time intervals after applying shampoo. So we can see that at baseline, we have 159 micrograms per centimeter squared of uh, triglycerides and 129 micrograms uh, per centimeter squared of free fatty acids. And then after applying shampoo, this dramatically decreases, as we'd expect, because we're washing all the sebum off of the scalp. But then at various time intervals after shampoo, you know, 24 hours, 48, 72, 96, uh, 120 hours, and so on, after the application of shampoo, the triglycerides and free fatty acids on the scalp actually uh, return back to baseline. And in fact, they go beyond baseline. And there's a lot of details that this study doesn't mention, like the ingredients in the shampoo. So this is somewhat speculative. However, it's pretty clear that shampoo has an effect on the amount of sebum, triglycerides, and free fatty acids on the scalp. And it also makes sense that if the very thing that feeds the strains of bacteria on our scalp changes, this is likely to influence the population of the populations of microorganisms on our scalp. Now, this study also says that free fatty acids and dandruff promote proliferation of bacteria, and thus a vicious cycle is formed. And, you know, this is not being scientifically validated in clinical trials, but what might be happening is that the higher or lower populations of these strains of bacteria and yeast, as a consequence to shampooing, can be disrupting the antigen to telogen ratios and the irritation can cause some inflammation, which we know is often found in balding scalps in both men and women. And here we have a study discussing the management of telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium is a hair shedding disorder. And it says that the use of a mild shampoo without sodium lauryl sulfate may be considered. And this is in the context of lessening or ameliorating the effects of hair shedding. I should probably also mention that this other study says that there's no, as of 2015, no scientific evidence has been produced to suggest that dermal exposure to SLS causes hair loss. And in this safety assessment of sodium lauryl sulfate, it says that SLS appears to be safe in formulations designed for discontinuous brief use followed by thorough rinsing from the surface of the skin. And that's exactly how most of us use shampoos. Now, fact of the matter here is that there's still a lot to be studied. There's still a lot of unanswered questions. And this is because there's so many variables at play that it's difficult to conclusively say what the effects of SLS are on hair health. Because, you know, we have to consider things like how much shampoo do you apply? Uh, do you have a dry scalp? Do you have dandruff? Or on the other hand, do you have an excessively oily scalp? Do you take showers or do you take baths? You know, do you have a sensitive scalp? What's the quality of the shampoo you use? You know, what concentration of SLS does your shampoo have? And how often do you apply the shampoo? And, you know, how active are you? How much do you sweat? How long is your hair? There's so many variables at play. And it's probably these variables that explain why some people might have different experiences with SLS. Now, another side effect of SLS is hair strand friction. So this study, for instance, says that anionic surfactants, like SLS, are strong cleansers and can cause an increase in negative electrical charges on the surface of the hair and increase frizz and friction. Now, if you're using a high-quality shampoo or a conditioner, it's probably going to have other ingredients which... Uh, counteract this friction effect and thereby reduce the, the frizz in the hair strands. However, if you're using a lower quality shampoo, the SLS is probably going to result in a bunch of friction which can damage the hair strands. And here we have another study that you know corroborates this by saying 
shampooing daily cleanses off the protective layer of sebum it can get statically charged and consequently more prone to friction all in all from reading a bunch of scientific journals on sls my personal take is that if you don't already have hair loss then sls is unlikely to have a significant enough effect that it's going to result in cosmetically perceptible hair loss. You know, that being said, if you do already have hair loss or or if you're experiencing microorganism overgrowth driven hair loss or if you're experiencing hair shedding, then SLS could be pushing this a little further and it might be wise to use a milder shampoo that's more gentle on the scalp. And that's it for this video and I'll catch you in the next one.